I and what am I doing? Um, I'm on another gunboat 68. Um, they seem to be a little bit of a thing for me at the moment. Um, I'm on a blue one instead of a grey one and I'm going from the uh, west side of the Atlantic to the east side of the Atlantic. Um, so delivering it back to Europe and we're in day number three I think. Maybe four. Maybe three. Can't remember. And we've been uh, light wind and upwind for the last few days. Um, turned on the motor last night because the breeze shut down. Um, when I mean it's shut down, it's shut down. Uh, we've actually been sailing in wind. The most wind we've had for the last three days is actually 11 knots. Um, and uh, this is one of the reasons why this boat's so impressive and why um, performance orientated boats are good. We, um, <laughs> we've turned the engine on because the wind was below four knots. Uh, so between four knots and uh, 10 knots of breeze, we've actually been sailing and we've been maintaining 180 to 210 mile days. Uh, <laughs> So, not bad going. Uh, we've been doing um, close to wind speed most of the time. Um, that's super cool and it's uh, something I'll highlight on a bit later is um, the ability to sail and sail really well and really fast in light airs means that our sea state is flat, relatively speaking. The sea state's really slight and super comfortable, so it's actually been really nice sailing. Day four, um, what's happened uh, since day three? A uh, little bit of motoring, because the wind was down at um, four knots. So boat speed at four knots was a bit hard to handle, so we've done some motoring. But um, early this morning, the breeze started coming back and we we're back at six knots of wind, so we were back at sailing. Um, yeah, now the breeze is filled into a nice uh, 10 knots so um, we're up in double digits sailing again breeze went aft so the uh, J0 went up uh, which means we're well into double digits now and yeah you can probably see behind me the best thing about sailing fast in light airs is that the sea states um, Calm is the only way you can explain it. So doing uh, double digits in um, 10 knots of uh, wind is, is a really cool thing. Um, going fast in heavy airs, that's not so much fun. Going fast in light airs, this, this is good fun. Um, makes, makes for a very uh, Oh, I wouldn't say relaxing, but certainly a very easy passage as far as um, bouncing around and comfort is concerned. So, um, you're, you're talking about performance boats. Performance boat that can uh, do more than wind speed sub 10 knots. You're on a serious winner, uh, just because you can do it so comfortably uh, without the sea state. This is, um, I highlighted one of the things that I've been saying for a, a long time that a, a performance multi should be able to go in light air. This is exactly why when you're in the middle of the Atlantic 
and the, uh, the wind's a bit light. Well, it's been light all the way so far. We haven't seen more than 11 knots, um, but we're still covering 200 mile days. It's bloody good going and comfortable as. So, um, talk about sail trim lots and lots. Um, oh, I'm not going to talk about sail trim too much, as much as I'm actually just going to talk about a sail. And I'm going to talk about this one. Um, and it's super cool. Um, it's a J0. Um, in other countries, we'd know it as a screecher. So, it's a fractional hoist just above the jib. And basically to the end of the lingeron uh, right so I talk about the sail shapes a lot and in particular profiles um, and this one is uh, absolute glamour for being able to see the aerofoil shape that I've been talking about for ages uh, you might be able to see these sort of funny looking uh, there's my fingers hard for me to see here um, they're glow-in-the-dark strips actually Sort of like a yellow, pale yellowy colour. And if you look at the shapes of those, um, you'll see the aerofoil uh, or aeroplane wing shape. So you see right here, it's sort of a little bit knuckly because this is a, um, a sail that's designed for running a little bit deeper. So it's got to turn the wind around from this 90 degree from the boat um, thing. Um, because our actual apparent wind is at 90 degrees, but oh, sorry, our true wind angle is 90 degrees, but our apparent wind angle is 34 at the moment. So the wind is coming still fairly far forward, but for this boat, it's reasonably aft. Um, so it's going to turn the wind around around this first little bit of knuckly bit here, and then there's a big low pressure curve here. And this is where the sail makes all its power. Uh, and then it flattens out to exhaust the, the air out the back. Um, so when I'm talking about sail shape and you're looking up at your sails, this is a sail shape that you're chasing. And whether your sail is full or flat, uh, a full sail will mean that this yellow stripe here will have lots of belly in it. If it's a flat sail, and this is a relatively flat sail, these stripes are relatively straight. So that's when we talk about flat sails and full sails and all the rest of it. That's what we're talking about. Uh, and when we're talking about twists in the sail, it's in relation to this aerofoil shape, this aerofoil shape and the aerofoil shape at the top. Uh, one facing this way and then the other one facing that way and then that one. The aerofoil section sort of twisting open as it as it goes up the sail. The other thing we talk about is four stay sag, and the four stay sag or the stay sag is from the top there down to the bottom here. Um, and as you can see, this one hasn't got a lot. It's a very big sail, and it doesn't have very much sag, especially in comparison to uh, the beautiful Code Zero that animate us. Um, this is uh, Doyle's structured luff cableless um, sail type technology and it is actually designed to take a lot of load through the sail and actually hold the luff of the sail, of the sail up and a bit more stable um, and I'd have to say it does actually a really 
quite a good job of it when you compare it to uh, some of the other sales and how much sag you get in the uh, in the four stays. So I see it's pretty cool. Uh, it does what it's advertised to do, which is good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this uh, this sale that Doyle's have made uh, for this boat. Um, you'll see it makes it go fast. We're doing 10 knots in eight knots of wind. Um, which is really really nice when you've got a fully loaded cruising boat. Ah, so a question was asked about how much mast rotation uh, should we use and how do we trim it. Um, well, it's pretty pretty easy. Um, The rough rule of thumb is we rotate the mast until the mast is rotated um, to face the apparent wind. I wonder if we can see it here. Um, so the apparent wind angle is the wind that the, the mast sees. Uh, Oh, how do I explain this one? This is this is a good curly one. Um, so we rotate the mast so that the middle of the mast is pointing directly into the apparent wind. That's, that's a good way. Uh, at the moment it's around 34 degrees. You might not be able to see it, but the actual wind indicator at the top um, is showing that the, the mast is pointing straight into the wind. So that's, that, that's the real um, crux of it or maximum rotation um, that you can get if it's not uh, rotated enough into the wind. That's, that's basically how it works. Um, but don't over rotate. If you have the ability to rotate your mast to 45, 50, some of them 60, 70 degrees, um, don't over rotate. Um, it actually doesn't achieve anything. It, creates a huge separation bubble on the windward side, which is not cool. Um, we've always found the fastest trim of the mast rotation to be uh, basically the mast neutral and facing straight into the wind. So it's a, it's a very simple uh, uh, rule to follow. And if we look down here, da, 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 da. Uh, mast rotation, 25 degrees, apparent wind angle, 37 degrees. So it needs a bit more rotation, but we're being slack. Uh, boat's going fast. And because this mast is actually a big round section, it is actually very tolerant in being um, able to handle big differentials in uh, right, you know, the rotation not being spot on. Uh, with the mast, like what we have on our boat where we inherited it from a cut boat, slightly different because it's quite narrow and quite aerofoily, it's a lot more sensitive. But um, yeah, if we were really anal about our trimming our mast rotation, 34 degrees we'd have it at full uh, mast rotation at 30 degrees. But, yeah, on this particular rig, it's not a um, showstopper. 